This four-cylinder turbocharged engine puts out more torque than the 5.7-liter Hemi, the 5-liter Coyote engine, and the 5.3-liter from GM itself. So we'll see how this engine does with 8,000 pounds behind it. Is it a gimmick or is it not? We're about to find out. very surprised at how well this engine performed and what is going on today guys my name is Alex welcome back to the channel today we are with this 2022 GMC Sierra with the 2.7 liter inline four turbocharged max engine and as of 2019 this is the base model engine for these trucks so I'm pretty interested to see how this spiced up four cylinder turbocharged engine performs under load. Behind me, we have an 8,000 pound trailer setup. This is the exact same trailer and trailer weight that we always use for any 1500 that we tow. We're also gonna be taking this trailer down the exact same towing loop that I always do about 200 kilometers. And we're gonna measure things like acceleration, fuel economy, engine braking, going up some pretty steep hills, and just generally how this truck handles with this exact same load that we use for every 1500. So this 2.7 liter turbo max engine is putting out 310 horsepower as well as 430 pound feet of torque, which like I mentioned is more than the 5.7 Hemi, more than the five liter Coyote engine from Ford, as well as more than GM's own 5.3 liter V8 available in these trucks. And with all that torque, this truck as it sits right now can tow a max towing capacity of 8,900 pounds. So, with our 8,000 pound load behind us, we are above 90% of this truck's max towing capacity, hopefully giving this little sewing machine a run for its money. Now, before we hit the road, I always like to see how much this trailer squats this truck. The load on the trailer is in the exact same position as every single 1500, so the tongue weight is identical on every single truck. It's roughly about 840 pounds, give or take. This truck has a max payload of 1,830 pounds. Um, so yeah, let's see how much this thing sits with no load on her. Um, we're gonna call that um, 37 and a half. So it looks like she squatted a fair bit. The rain is coming. Okay, so uh, 35 and a quarter. So she squatted two inches and a quarter. These trucks are low to begin with. And then with that load, she does look pretty low. I mean, I don't know. We got a little sewing machine, turbocharged engine in the front. This thing looks pretty squatted out. 28 foot trailer, 8,000 pounds. I don't know. This could be an interesting tow down the highway. So this is actually the first GM um, 1500 I've towed with on this towing loop with this trailer. So it'll be interesting to see how the truck handles um, in general. But uh, yeah, hopefully it'll blow up this little uh, four cylinder engine because there's quite a bit of load behind her and just driving around town here, um, <laughs> that little sewing machine up front here is working pretty hard. It'll be interesting to see when we uh, put our foot through the floor to get on the highway here and do our acceleration test and uh, see if this engine can actually handle a load. Well, she definitely sounds like a four banger. There's no doubt about it, but we're gonna see if she actually can perform like a V8. So, We'll get to 60 kilometers an hour and we will drop the hammer. 62 to the floor. Woo! Little gap there. Don't know what that shift pattern was, but uh, she didn't like that very much. So we made it to 100. I'm sure as you guys heard, that thing was working pretty good. Um, but I mean, we got to 110 in relatively good speed. All right, so we got our cruise set at 110. And now before we get too far on this route, I want to go back to the first video I made about this engine when I dove into all the cool tech and technology in this four cylinder engine that gives it all of this power to allow it to tow something like an 8,000 pound load. 
There is a dual volute turbocharger in here, which is gonna help maximize low end boost and limit turbo lag. This engine is gonna have direct injection. It's got ECU controlled variable valve timing. There is dual overhead electromagnetic three phase sliding camshafts to allow this engine to operate with three different cam profiles. Basically, you have a low lift valve position and that's for fuel efficiency, just normal driving. Then you have what's called a high lift position and that's when the cam slides over to a more aggressive cam low profile. Basically, the lobes are larger and that's gonna force the, the valves open further and you're gonna get more airflow shoved into that cylinder and you're gonna make more power. The surprisingly, so far on our journey here, we've been able to maintain 2200 RPM for most of the towing loop so far, um, which is actually quite surprising. I thought for sure this little sewing machine up here would be revving like crazy, but not the case so far. Not the case so far. This Turbo Max may have a little punch to its name. So we'll keep an eye on that, obviously. Um, but so far, so good. Okay, so here's another decent incline. It's kind of a slow and steady incline, really not that steep, but it is, again, another really nice test to see how these engines perform. Um, right now, we're at about 2,500 RPM, and uh, that's it. With 8,000 pounds behind us, this four-cylinder engine's keeping us at 2,500 RPM, going up a decent incline. And we'll see as we turn the corner here, it gets a little steeper but it'll be interesting if this engine has to shift or not. We've got a slow moving truck up here. We'll make the pass, not a big deal. Oh, two slow moving trucks. This is kind of impressive. I didn't think I would say this about this engine, but it is amazing what a turbo can do to an engine, especially when towing. So you can see we have these slow moving trucks here. The hazards are on. Oh, we got some slower traffic. We'll have to put the brakes on. Not really sure why. This thing has a little pole behind her, which is cool to see. Well, as we hit our 40 kilometer mark on this towing loop, um, I thought we'd check in on our fuel economy. We were sitting at 21.7 liters per 100 kilometers, which, I mean, seems to be pretty average for any 1500 towing this weight. But I think fuel economy is gonna be an interesting topic with this engine because, again, it's a four-cylinder. I think GM's main focus on this engine was to make it fuel efficient. So it'll be really interesting to see the fuel economy when towing, I have a sneaky suspicion it's not gonna be as good as people think. All right, the sun has come out and the sun is shining on this engine and this towing loop because for the most part, this thing is just sitting just above 2000 RPM, 2200 RPM, um, something I really, really did not expect. And when we go over just little slight inclines, something that would normally downshift a 10-speed transmission, at least it did with the Ford um, 5 liter. This thing, the turbo spools up and it just stays right at that 2200 RPM. Something, again, I was just not expecting to see out of this really small displacement engine. So once again, we're going uphill here and uh, we're at 2500 RPM, that's it. This little sewing machine engine just has so much torque down low, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so this small engine makes a tremendous amount of torque, 430 pound-feet of torque. And the main reason is something that doesn't necessarily jump off the spec sheet. Um, it has to do with the fact that this has an extremely long stroke in it. Um, the stroke in this engine is 4.01 inches, which is massive for an inline four engine. And just to put that in perspective, um, that's a bigger stroke length than the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax in the HD trucks. Um, so. It goes without a doubt that GM truly made this engine for the pickup trucks because, um, as I've mentioned many times before, engines with really long strokes have a very long crank throw, and that gives it an exceptional ability to make torque um, very well naturally and really down low in the torque band as well. 
Another engine that has a really long stroke is the 6.6 liter Cummins. It's only an inline six engine, but it has a stroke of over five inches. And that's what makes it such a torque monster and has the ability to pull and tow things so well is because of its natural long stroke. So it is really no surprise that this thing will make 90% of its peak torque at 1500 RPM, which is actually really, really impressive for a turbocharged inline four engine to make that much torque down low in the RPM bands. So here's another perfect example. We got another little incline we're just gonna go over here. And as we'll see, this engine will not downshift. 2200 RPM, and that is a lot to do with this crazy large stroke in this 2.7 liter inline four. Having a turbocharger when you're towing makes life so much easier on you, the driver, as well as the engine, the transmission, because on a naturally aspirated engine, in order to get that extra torque you need when you're going up hills to keep the wheels turning as fast as you want them to, the engine needs to downshift, get into a higher RPM band to get that torque. Now with the turbo, you don't necessarily need to do that. All the turbo needs to do is feed more boost, more air into the engine, and you get more power on demand uh, instead of having to downshift. So that is why, or one of the reasons why this engine isn't downshifting as much either. Now there is one downside towing with a turbo, and that is fuel economy. All that extra airflow that gets shoved into those cylinders needs to be met with more fuel. Um, so that is why, as we saw with the EcoBoost, um, it did not do very well in terms of fuel economy, finishing with like 22.7 liters per 100 kilometers. Um, and this engine, although sitting at 20.2 liters per 100 kilometers, not as bad, is really not as fuel efficient as you would think for a four cylinder, mostly because all that airflow um, needs to be met with more fuel. Well, we made it to our halfway point here. The old Irving. When I first put this trailer on this truck, you can see how squatted it looks. These things are low to begin with. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Here's trouble. We got this little sewing machine engine in here. This thing's just bottomed out. It's gonna be a bad tow. And I have to say the complete opposite is the truth. Um, well, it is still squatted like crazy, but for the most part, this thing has not gone over 2,500 RPM, which is, wild. I thought this thing would be revving like crazy um, to maintain our speed of 110 kilometers an hour with this 8,000 pound load behind us. And that is simply just not true. Now on our back stretch, we have a really big hill to climb. It'll be interesting to see how this thing tows in the upper RPM range. See, this thing does sit so low, um, but let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and let's turn her around, get her on home, hopefully continue on with nothing but positive things to say, but, uh, we'll see. We're only halfway there. GMC baby, GMC. All right. We are coming to the biggest hill on the course, but first we're going to see how this thing does in terms of engine braking as we go down into the valley. So we're set at 110 kilometers an hour and, uh, let's just see if this engine can keep us at that speed. I have, and I I think it may have an issue if I can speak the language. 113, 114, here comes the rain, kids. 115, okay, downshift. Yeah, so this thing's not keeping us. 116, downshift again, 3,500 RPM. Still, one, there's 117, so we're seven kilometers over where we should be. Not the best in terms of engine braking. If that was a bigger hill, we would be probably on the brakes for sure. But more importantly is the climb up. Um, so we'll see if we can keep 110. I'm really intrigued what this engine's all about. All right, here we go. Oh baby, 110, 3200 RPM, and she's gonna carry us up this hill. We're gonna make the uh, jump over here for the slow traffic. That is pretty impressive. that this little 2.7 liter sewing machine of an engine 
can haul 8,000 pounds up this grade at 3,200 RPM, not even in some high RPM range. Wow. Did not expect that. Uh, to be fair, I'm pretty sure, and I'll review the footage, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost was right around the same RPM range, and that thing is an absolute monster of a tower. Um, yeah, wow, that was, I was not expecting that. So once again, going up a pretty decent incline here, and we are at 2,500 RPM. It's like this engine isn't even working that hard. Um, and I, obviously the camera doesn't do it justice and these aren't mountains, but this is a pretty good incline and most engines would have to downshift further in the RPM band, especially naturally aspirated V8s in order to get that torque to keep those wheels moving at 110 kilometers an hour. So, so it does seem like GM knew exactly what they were doing with this small displacement engine giving it the ability to tow a decent amount of weight fairly well um, while trying to save a lot of fuel with only a four-cylinder engine. Now, I don't know if they did the latter. I don't know if this engine really is that fuel efficient in comparison to other options, but what I can say is this thing tows my 8,000 pound trailer very well in comparison to other 1,500 engines that I have run this towing loop with. We just exited a construction zone. Let's get back to 110. Woo! <coughs> well, she certainly isn't the fastest engine, but uh, there is plenty of get up and go. We are coming to the end of our almost 200 kilometer towing loop. We are sitting at 20.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Now the EcoBoost finished with 22.5 liters per 100 kilometers and the five liter Coyote engine finished with 19.6 liters per 100 kilometers. So as I kind of suspected, this engine is not necessarily the most fuel efficient. It's, it is kind of funny how the five liter um, naturally aspirated V8 is actually more efficient when towing than both the 3.5 liter turbocharged engine and this 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. Oh yeah, look at that power off the line. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, she's not the quickest engine, um, but uh, she does certainly get you up to speed. There's no doubt about that. Trailer, we unloaded the trailer. We got the truck back in the shop here. It is time for a conclusion. And I'm gonna start off with GM's own advertisement, and it says basically turn heads with a 2.7 liter turbo on and off the road. And I have to be honest, this thing turned my head when I was towing with it. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed at the beginning of the video, you probably did. I wasn't really that enthusiastic on this thing doing very well. The truck was squatting like crazy. I called this thing a little sewing machine up front. Um, I was expecting a poor towing run, lots of revs and just an overall poor experience. But I have to be completely honest, I am very surprised at how well this engine performed. And I guess it makes sense because you look on paper, it's 430 pound feet of torque. And I guess I just assume maybe it was a little bit of a gimmick like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and it is not. This thing towed that 8,000 pound trailer very, well for a four cylinder engine. Now granted, there's not much wind resistance with that trailer, it's more just weight, but I would say this thing towed that trailer very comparable to let's say the five liter and like even maybe the EcoBoost, although the EcoBoost is probably in a league of its own. GM has made something that does in fact have the ability to tow and compete with any engine in the segment 
obviously it is going to be middle of the road, maybe even bottom tier, but it is not going to be this massive drop off that I was kind of expecting. I think it's probably a step up from the V6 option that GM used to have. And I think it's probably much better than the V6s that Ford and Ram both have to offer. I think this thing would probably tow loops around those V6s. So in terms of a base engine, just on face value, if we're not looking at reliability, longevity, if we're just looking at purely performance, this base engine, I think, is a huge step up from the V6, and it tows incredibly well for a base level engine in a 1500. As always, I'm always interested in what you guys have to say. If you own one of these engines, you know, what's your experience like if you've towed with it? Like I've mentioned in my first video I made on the engine, the reliability longevity would be something that concerns me because there's just so much technology, new technology stuffed in this engine. Obviously it works, this thing makes a ton of power for, the, for its displacement, but I think you know it, the longevity is what would concern me if I was to buy it. But in terms of performance, like I said, it blew my expectations out of the water. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the towing video with this engine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you don't forget to leave that thumbs up, and if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because we got lots of uh, towing videos planned, lots of trucks gonna be on the channel and uh, makes me excited, hopefully you guys too. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next frickin' video, guys.